Hi friends, in this video we will see the stability of transfer function from pole zero plots. We will see this through some examples. So let us take some examples. This is our first example. Let's take this point as minus a. So what will be the transfer function of this one? The transfer function of this is 1 by s plus a. Let's convert it in time domain. So for this we have to do inverse Laplace transform. So it will be ht equals to e power minus at u of t. If we plot this graph we will get a exponentially decreasing function which is a stable one. So the transfer function is stable. Let's take one more example. Now in this example our pole is at 0 means at origin. So the transfer function is 1 by s. If we do the inverse Laplace transform of this one we will get ht equals to u of t. If we plot this graph we will get our step function which is marginally stable. Let's take one more example. Pole in the right hand side of the S plane. And one more thing is that this is our J omega axis and this is the real axis. So the transfer function of this one is 1 by s minus a. Let's take this point as a. If we do the inverse Laplace transform of this, we will get e power a t u of t. The plot of this function is exponentially increasing one. Therefore, the graph is unstable one. Means the pole zero plot is an unstable one. Let's take some more examples. Now we will take repeated poles at a position. Let us take two poles are there at minus a. So what will be our transfer function? 1 by s plus a whole square. Now we have to do inverse Laplace transform of this one. The inverse Laplace transform of this is ht equals to t into e power minus a t u of t. Now how to plot this graph? Let's plot this graph part by part. For t we know that it's a ram function and e power minus a t u t is exponentially decreasing one. If we combine these two means if we multiply these two we will get a graph like this. which is also a stable one. So our transfer function is stable. Let's take one more example. Let's have two repeated poles at origin means at 0. So the transfer function will be 1 by s square. If we do the inverse Laplace transform of this one we will get t of ut. So we know that t of ut is ram function which will start from 0. This is an unstable one. Now let us take one more example. Repeated pole on the right hand side of the S plane. Therefore, the transfer function will be 1 by s minus a whole square. If we do the inverse Laplace transform of this one, we will get t into uh, which is h of uh, h of t equal to t into e power a t u t. So we know that t is the ram function and e power a t u t is 
exponentially increasing function if we com combine these two we will get exponentially increasing function which is much more steeper so this is also an unstable one up to until here we saw that if the pole is in the left side it is a stable one if the pole is in j omega axis it is a marginally stable and if the pole is in right side it is unstable and in repeated poles if the pole in, is in left hand side then it, then only it is stable else if it is in j omega axis or in the right hand side it is unstable remember these conditions now let us take complex poles until here we have seen all these poles as uh, real poles now we will take complex poles so what is the transfer function of this one you can write the transfer function as 1 by s minus minus of means s minus real part whole square plus imaginary part square here real part is minus a minus a and the imaginary part is b square so our transfer function will be s plus a whole square plus b square remember that s minus real part whole square real part is minus a s minus minus of a whole square plus imaginary part square this will be our transfer function so now we have to do inverse Laplace of this one if we do inverse Laplace transform it will be 1 by b e power minus a t sin b t u of t we know about e power minus a t u t how the curve is it is an exponentially decreasing one and the curve of sine is this one so if we combine these two we will get a curve like this now let us take one more example two poles are there in j omega axis which are complex poles therefore the transfer function will be s minus minus of real part here real part is 0 so it is s minus minus 0 whole square plus imaginary part it is b square which will be 1 by s square plus b square if we do the inverse plus of this one we will get 1 by b sin of bt u of t the graph of this one will be this one which is marginally stable here in this one we can find uh, we can see this that the graph is stable here so our pole zero plot is also stable now let us take one more example which is a complex pole in right hand side of the s plane let us take this point as a this is jb minus jb so the transfer function will be 1 by s minus a whole square plus b square if we do the left inverse plus transform of this one we will get 1 by b sin bt e power a t u of t the graph of this one will be sin b t u t will be this one and e power 
AT UTL with this one. If we combine these two, this will be an unstable one. So the pole zero plot is unstable. So friends, in this complex poles also we, we have seen that if it is in left hand side of the S plane, it is stable. If it is in J omega axis, it is marginally stable. And if it is in right hand side of the S plane, it is unstable. Let's take one example to see all these things. So what is the transfer function of this one? Transfer function is here two zeros are there. These zeros will be in the numerator. S plus 2 into S plus 4. And in denominator all the poles will be there. S plus 1. S plus 3. And S minus 2. Here by seeing a pole in the right hand side we can say that our transfer function is unstable because the pole is in the right hand side. So the pole zero plot is an unstable one. So friends, if you like this video, do like, comment, share and please subscribe to our channel Amra Bank Ventures. Thank you.